The armored train Heiyajiro Kotetsujo is suddenly attacked by many Kambane, humans transformed into zombie-like creatures as a result of a virus, attacking anything and everyone in sight. The Bushi must defeat them at all costs. However, soon after, a Bushi, while fighting, is bitten by a Kabane, and commits Harakiri to avoid becoming a Kabane the unavoidable fate of one bitten by a Kabane. At Aragane Station, the train's destination, Ikoma stands who, being a steamsmith, is trying to come up with a powerful gun that would blast the Kabane to smithereens in one go. After Kotsetsujo's arrival, Ikoma produces some Kabane body parts that'd help him in the whole building process. On the other side, Kensho, being the leader of the Yomogawa family, lets Shimon and Mume go, them being the passengers from the mandatory Kabane inspection headed for Gongakaku. But despite all his efforts, Ikoma is detained for insubordination and is visited by Mume in secret. The girl takes an interest in the steamsmith, his personality and interest in Kabane working a lot in his favor. Later on, another Hiyajiro named Fusujo arrives at the station. The drawbridge is lowered to allow the train to pass safely, but soon the Kabane take over the train, crashing it into the defending wall. The Kabane then shift their focus to the station. Seeing all this, Ikoma makes a run for it, luring the Kabane into his house and killing it with a bolt gun. The guy gets bitten by the Kabane whilst doing so, but being a steamsmith, he's able to stop the blood flow using several unconventional techniques, slowing the passage of the virus to his brain. Being successful in doing so, Ikoma reverts to his human form and loses consciousness. At the same time, we see Muemi in action as she kills a Kabane using a blade which forms a part of her shoe. Finally coming to his senses, Ikoma is surprised by his feet and tells his fellow steamsmith, Takumi, about all that's happened, and how his bolt gun and antivirus technique can be used. At the same time, the people who survived the Kabane attack fight within the Aragane station. They try to seek an opportunity to escape in Kotetsujo. As all of this is going on, Mume arrives in her gear and clears the way. This in turn enables Yukina, the only engineer there, able to commandeer and control the Kotetsujo. She then jumps into the Kabane mass and lures them away, bite the dust in the process. Meanwhile, Ikoma and Takumi, along with the surviving citizens, board the train as quickly as possible. But something seems different about Ikoma, and that is a major concern for Mume. Afterwards, Ayame Yomagawa, Kensho's daughter, comes up with the special key to start the train's engine. One of the bushi, Kurisu, instructs Mume to make sure that the train's rear is free of Kabane, but she just falls asleep, not lending a hand. Later on, while fighting a Kabane, Ikoma's injured heart is seen by everyone, and he's forced to get off the Kotsetsujo. But not soon after, the train stops all of a sudden because of a malfunctioning bridge, and everyone from earlier witnesses Ikoma killing the Kabane. Ikoma then takes matters into his own hands and lowers the drawbridge, making the train resume its travels. Despite the Bushi being totally against it, Mume and Takumi vouch to get Ikoma back on the train. Just when Kurisu is about to kill him, Mume interferes and tells him that she and Ikoma are Kabaneri, beings that stand in the middle of being a human and Kabane. After hearing this, Kurisu is ready to kill them both, but is stopped by Ayame, who tells everyone how Ikoma and Mume are the reason they're hiding here in one piece. The train is sent off for Kongo Kaku, which is the Shogun's greatest stronghold, and Mume insists on being there on the train. But considering the two Kabaneri recently added, the shortage of food and water, and the current state of affairs, the survivors are doubtful and distressed to no end. Mume tells Ikoma about her mission and how she needs his help to accomplish it. The two start training together. Later on, the train has to stop for the purpose of restock and repair, and the survivors pray for the departed souls. Ikoma then tells Mume how he wants to avenge his sister's death at the hands of the Kabane. He also tells her about the green stone tied to his palm, which reacts to the Kabane in a certain way. After hearing this, Mume also reveals to Ikoma how the Kabaneri can only survive on human blood, and soon after kills a pregnant woman who transforms into a Kabane. But at the same time, Ayame attacks Ikoma. But Ikoma just lets everyone know about his vow, making the passengers calm down a little. But Ikoma starts acting strange because of his thirst for blood and attacks Ayame. But Kurisu saves Ayame and at the same time, Kabane start to appear in the woods surrounding the Kotetsujo, making everyone board the train as quickly as possible. But the fear of the Kabaneri is still there. The six chiefs under the command of Akoji make Ayame hand over the master key. Akoji then makes the Kotetsujo take a shorter route to Kongo Kaku. 
going through the mountains in spite of the increased danger posed by the Kabane on the exposed mountain path. Later on, Akoji instructs a chief to get to Kumi and the other steamsmiths, Kajika and Sukari making them reach the Kotetsujo's last car, where Ikoma and Mume are present, and then detaches the car. However, the Kabane, which also this time include a sword-wielding Wazatori, a Kabane that is much more adept and proficient at combat, attacks the Kotetsujo and kills some other people. Ayame, Kurusu, and the other Bushi fight the Kabane while the other passengers make it to the train's front. At the same time, Mume, Ikoma, and their allies escape from their car and fight the Kabane. But once again, Mume falls asleep from the exhaustion. Kurusu then fights the skilled Kabane from earlier but gets injured during the exchange of blades. Meanwhile, Ikoma is in the need of some human blood, to which Ayame slashes her arm to give him the blood right away. Ikoma then proceeds to kill the Wazatori, and Ayame's Rokan Shoujo marks the beginning of the celebration of the victory. Ayame then gets her hands on the master key once again and declares that the Kabaneri would stay on the train, also offering them blood during the time. Ikoma's friends and Kurusu as well end up agreeing with her. Ikoma then helps the Bushi develop weapons to kill the Kabane and Ayame makes the two Kabaneri bodyguards of this train. The train finally arrives at Yashiro Station, which has also been attacked by the Kabane. Now the Aragane passengers rescue some human survivors, who tell about a black fog appearing before the attack. Mume then meets up with Enoku, a crippled fighter who is still loyal to her brother. He gives her the heads up that a shogunate is stockpiling weapons, advising her to complete her mission as soon as possible. Afterwards, debris ends up blocking the path and the Kotetsujo committee decides to use a crane to remove it. Now Ikoma suggests a route to the crane that doesn't sound like the best one, but Mume insists that a head-on clash with the Kabane is the hour of need right now. Ikoma then leads the engineers to the crane while Mume attacks the Kabane all on her own. She doesn't have more than 90 seconds, but the girl ends up defeating the Kabane, but there doesn't seem to be an end to them. The repair crew retreat, and Ikoma lifts the debris with a crane while Mume uses her last bit of energy to fight the other Kabane showing up. The weakened and exhausted Mume is then attacked by a Wazatori, making things look bad. But Ikoma rushes to the rescue. At the same time, a behemoth of a shadow jumps at the train. The black fog from earlier is revealed to, in fact, be a colony of Kabane that are fused into one giant beast. Being stuck and unable to move, the Kotetsujo goes back to the station workshop and the doors get shut. Ikoma saves Mume from under the rubble. The committee then discuss about the options they have available. Meanwhile, being unable to save Mume, Ikoma lures the Kabane away from Mume, killing as many as he can before reaching his limit. Afterwards, Kurisu and some others rescue Mume via a tunnel. Mume then runs to find Ikoma, who is badly wounded, and everyone returns to the train altogether. Whilst the Black Fog Beast is distracted and kept away, it feeds on the bodies of the dead Kabane. To this, Ikoma removes the wreckage from the tracks, and Mume suggests a plan to kill the beast using every one. The Kotetsujo then leaves the workshop while the shadowy beast is still in pursuit. At the last possible moment, they shoot the beast with the train's cannon. Mume kills the woman controlling the shadowy titan of Kabane, who turns out to be someone unexpected. She is surprised to no end when she comes to know that the mastermind was a Kabaneri like her. Now with the beast defeated, the Kotetsujo leaves the Yashiro station after resting a bit. The Kotetsujo then makes its way to the Shitori station. The station is still occupied by humans, but they are only allowed to stay for a couple of days at most. Ayame then exchanges something valuable to purchase bamboo for the Tanabe about a ceremony so people can hang their wishes on it. They are then offered food and other provisions in exchange for the Jet Bullet's technology, with Ikoma the Steamsmith being the very man behind them. Mume then reveals to Ikoma that her name was Hozumi before she became a Kabaneri, and he promises that he will make her a human again. The next day, everyone shares their wishes, hoping for a better life. The same day, the Heijiro Kokujo arrive with the Hunter Squad. It's an elite team that hunts Kabane with Biba, the Shogun's son. Mumel calls him her brother. However, Ikoma is suspicious of Biba's past and whether he is really a hero or something else. Biba Amatori is introduced to Ayame, and he reveals that he is Mume's older brother in name only, having been disowned by the Shogun. As this exchange is going on, the Kabane attack Chitori Station, and Biba takes his hunter squad and fights them. He also kills a re-emerged Enoku, who he accuses of betrayal. Biba then offers to board the Kotetsujo to Kongo Kaku. 
Hikoma suspects that Biba turned Mume into a Kabaneri, giving her the name Mume for his own purposes. Biba asks Mume to get the Kotetsujo master key for him, but she ends up being tricked and is given the wrong key. Hikoma discovers soon that Biba is, in fact, transporting Kabane on his train, but Biba uses Mume to prevent him from entering the carriage. Ikoma's suspicions are now strengthened, him now being convinced that Biba is not a hero. However, the Kokujo with the hunters is refused entry to Iwato Station, it being the last before Kongo Kaku. Ayame decides to part ways with the hunters and asks Ikoma to get Mume. At the same time, Lord Meida, the leader of the fortress, agrees to a meeting with Biba. However, that on the condition that only women and children accompany him. During the meeting, Mume leaves the meeting to lower the Iwato station's drawbridge, letting Biba's Kabane into the station. Biba then ends up killing Lord Maeda. When Mume sees the Kabane attack the station, she is horrified by what she has just done. Meanwhile, Biba's men take Ayame hostage. They also kill the Shogun Samurai for what Biba says and retribution for the Shogunate's cowardice for the past 10 years. He is a firm believer that only the strong should survive. Afterwards, Biba injects his Kabaneri Horobi with a serum so that she can become the heart of an another black fog beast. This ends up gathering all the Kabane into a single colony, a Nue. The Nue is defeated, but Horobi ends up surviving. When she reaches Biba, he kills her immediately since she served her purpose. Later on, Biba and his men control a devastated Iwato station. Mume then comes to realize that everything Biba has told her was a big lie. However, now Biba and his troops are in control of the Heashiro and its passengers and are using their blood to feed his Kibane. Biba then offers a deal to Ayame. He states that if she can open the gates to Kongo Kaku on top of arranging a meeting with his father, he will guarantee the safety of her people. He goes on to tell Ayame about the time when his father sent him 400,000 troops to fight the Kabane. But later on, when the replacement supplies failed to arrive, they were overrun and wiped out. Meanwhile, Ikoma comes up with an audacious plan with some of the passengers to retake control of the Heajiro. Biba offers Mume a chance to join his troops, but she refuses and is forced to take the captive vaccine. Ikoma's group then start their attack to take control of the Kotetsujo, but Biba, being Biba, had anticipated a counterattack and confronts Ikoma. He ends up killing Takumi, and Biba calls on Mume to attack Ikoma. She obeys his order due to Biba's captive vaccine from earlier, stabbing Ikoma who falls from the Heiajido into a coast. Ikoma is still alive, gets washed up on the shore, and is found by Kurusu, who had gone missing not long ago. Biba then injects Mume with the same liquid that he used on Horobi, the girl that got turned into Nue. The Kotetsujo finally arrives at Kongo Kaku and announces that the men who destroyed Iwato Station have been captured, to which the train is allowed to enter. Now Ayame pretends to have Biba prisoner, because they are being held hostage by Biba. Also, they can be taken to meet with the Shogun. Biba then tricks the Shogun into holding a sword tainted with a Kabane virus. The sword soon transforms him into a Kabane. Biba then kills him. He goes on to announce that Kabane are among them. This ends up causing a panic, and people start killing each other out of fear. The Kari Karashu take the Kotetsujo into the city and release the Kabane. Meanwhile, Ayame escapes with the help of her uncle. Kurusu has one of Biba's scientists prisoners, who has knowledge about all the Kabane virus is capable of. The scientist tells how Mume can be saved, once she becomes a Nue by injecting white plasma into her heart. Upon hearing this, Ikoma insists on being injected by black plasma, something that will give him additional strength. However, it will accelerate the Kabane virus and shorten his life. Afterwards, Mume begins her transformation into a Nue, and Ikoma and Kurusu enter Kongo Kaku, drawing the Kanabe towards them. Ayame appeals to the people to stop attacking each other in fear. With Kurusu's help, Ikoma is able to reach the Mume, who is now a Nue. He destroys the Heajiro Kokoju in the process when the hunters try to drive it into him. His additional powers since taking the Black Serum coming in quite handy here. Mume seems to be unconscious and unaware of what she's become. She ends up recalling memories from the past and imagining herself surrounded by butterflies. Ikoma reaches the Mume Nu but is confronted by Biba who is revealed to be another Kabaneri. Biba stabs Ikoma with his sword, but this doesn't end up killing him. As he is about to try again, Ikoma recovers and blasts him with his bolt gun. Mume appears to understand that Ikoma is near, and she allows him to inject her with the white serum. This ends up destroying the Nue and returning her to her previous form. Ayame and her people leave the smoldering city of Kongokaku in the Heijiro Kototseju with Kurusu, Mume, and an injured Ikoma on board. Ikoma starts to recover and the effects of the black serum seem to diminish. As an afterthought, Mume hands him back his green stone.
And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.